So what's going on guys welcome back for another episode of my turbo ls miata build today is october 1st and we have roughly nine days to make it out to a celebrity cars and coffee meet that's happening on october 10th um, the car still needs a lot of work to get into a reliable state and that entails fixing an oil leak and replacing the transmission with my spare one that i have at home however the spare one is a t56 and it's a little bit wider to where it's going to hit the ears inside the trans tunnel so we're going to need to fabricate a new transmission mount in order for everything to work together i have the spare drive shaft for it so theoretically all we have to do is build the trans mount and it should be good to go so um <laughs> i guess we'll jump right into it let's get to work I'll give you guys a quick rundown of what I've accomplished. Today is October 4th and I started pulling the engine on October 1st to find out where the oil leak was coming from. So um, you can tell that I have silicone spray pretty much all over the engine because every single orifice on this thing, whether it was the oil pan, whether it was the rear main seal, whether it was the oil pressure sensor o-ring, everything uh, got replaced just because um, I don't want any issues with it. So uh, I got that taken care of and I also got the T56 bolted onto it. And right now I just have it sitting nice and free just to see how much clearance I have on the ears. And uh, I am going to have to cut the passenger side out. So um, if I'm cutting the passenger side out, then it's pointless to keep the other side. So I'm going to cut out uh, both of them and then we're going to have to go to the inside of the car to uh, pretty much rebuild the trans tunnel so um, I have the shifter plate that I made for the T10 uh, I have that removed I have the floorboards removed because we're going to put uh, carpet back in this thing so I still have to pull the wiring on it and I'd say that's about it so um, the engine's going to be coming back out just because uh, that will give me space to actually cut the ears off the trans tunnel, so on and so forth. And then we can actually get to reinstalling the clutch that was on it. So, yeah, uh, we have a lot of work ahead. Like I said, today is October 4th, and we have six days to make it out to uh, Cars and Coffee. So, let's quit the rambling and get to work. give this another shot so safety first got the fire extinguisher on hand and we are ready so i got uh, all the fuel lines covered up with uh soaking wet towels that's why you see it dripping right back there just in case any of the slag uh might get on them so yep let's go ahead and give this a shot Just like that, they're off. So um, now all I have to do is take the flap disc and clean them all up and we should be ready to build up a new transmission mount. All 
Alright, so after about an hour with the flap disc, uh, I was able to get both plates cleaned up really nice. So now we have a base to uh, build our transmission mount off of. So um, the next step is to go ahead and plop the engine and trans right back in where it belongs. And then uh, everything should line up as soon as I put the engine mounts on. Uh, the trans should just be uh, going up and down so I'll be able to find the angle on that. And then, like I said, we could just start building our cross member right there. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and throw this guy back in there. All right, the car is ready to go back together for one last time. Um, I went to Ajo's and got this piece made. It's a little extension that will push this out the bell housing, and then this is my old line that went to my Land Cruiser uh, master cylinder. And then the transmission mount is finished. I have some plates that go on each side of the trans tunnel. Um, I'm going to weld those nuts to that and then weld the plate to the inside because I'm going to put carpet over it, so um, I just want it to stay put. And we go underneath the car. The trans mount is finished. You kind of get a pretty decent look right there. And then come to the front of the car. Got the front main seal installed, so all I have to do is put the uh, balancer on, and then I have the rear main seal down here. So everything's looking good. All we gotta do is pull everything off, install the clutch, do the rear main seal, um, and we can slap it back in and give it a go. So let's get to it. All right, so picking up where I left off, got the engine and trans back out. Um, I got the rear main seal and clutch installed, and also the slave cylinder. And all hose, they killed it with uh, making this fitting. It poked out just enough to where I could get a wrench on it, but not enough to interfere with the trans tunnel. So, aside from that, all I have to do is made up the engine to the, or the transmission to the bell housing and then the full unit can slide onto the engine. But I think I'm going to uh, clean up the bay and respray it because it is just absolutely destroyed, um, especially over here from when the brake fluid fell on it. So 
yeah, um, I think that's what we're going to do. So let's get to it. All right, I promise I will paint the engine bay legit one of these days, but uh, I guess Rattle Can does the job for now. Um, I'm in a time crunch, so this has to do. But uh, I guess the next time the engine comes out, then I'll actually invest in real paint. But looks good to me, so we're sending it. I haven't really picked up the camera, but uh, as you can see, the engine uh, is in, the transmission's bolted together, the turbo kit's on. Um, I just have a couple small little things to do, like plug in those vacuum lines, do the wiring over here. Uh, I have to re-drill these brackets for the fuel rail because I moved the fuel rail forward so it would get the um, fitting off of the firewall so it's not rubbing. And that's pretty much it. So I have to uh, do the oil feed and return for the turbo. But other than that, it's getting pretty close, so I'm really happy about that, and um, I guess let's continue along. Alright, so we're at the stage about ready to start it. Um, I have everything tight, fueling being the main one. Uh, the coolant lines are still loose, but everything else is plugged in and has the green light to fire up. So I got the clutch bled, I have power steering fluid and the power steering pump. Um, and I spent majority of last night putting the interior back together, mainly the carpet. And I'm so glad that I did because it came out great. Uh, I have to build a little panel for the switchboard and then I have to uh, build a little cover for down there. But other than that, it turned out really, really good. So pretty happy about that. But let's go ahead and start this car and see what it does, see if there's any leaks. I guess it would help if there's power. Yeah. Un unplugged. Oops. There we go. Jeez, thing was killing me. Anyways, should have power on the car, which we do. And let's fire it up. Car's done, running great. There's no issues with it whatsoever. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So, yeah, uh, I have to clean up the garage because it's just obliterated. Um, and then after that, we're going to the dyno. So, hopefully, we can get the car tuned. Today is October, I think it's the 9th. Um, it's Thursday. So, uh, I have. No, it's the 8th. I have two days to get to a Celebrity Cars and Coffee meet that I really want to show the car off. And also, on October 12th through the 14th, I'm going out to uh, Palm Springs, California to give my car to uh, Tanner Faust, to Rob Ferretti, and a couple other people to put it through its paces because they're looking for the fastest street car on the West Coast. And I applied. They accepted me out of all the submissions out there. There's Supras, there's twin turbo Vipers, there's Audis, all these big horsepower cars. And then here I am with a $10,000 Miata making hopefully 700 horsepower. So I'll let you guys know what uh, happens at the dyno and that's going to be the next video. And I guess we'll see you guys next time.